Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is infuriate. Infuriate. Now, if I was to ask you, have you ever made God mad? Maybe you just keep that answer to yourself because I'm sure we probably all say the same thing. Yes, of course we have. Um, even though we don't uh, see him face to face just yet, we know that there have been times in our lives that we have really just infuriated God. Uh, we know mainly that every time we sin, that does that. And every time from the time sin came into the garden, that that infuriated God. Um, it's because he loves us so much. And we have to remember that. And even as we're looking through Second Kings and we see um, what looks to be the punishment and wrath of God poured out, let's be careful to also notice his patience and his long suffering. Uh, you're going to see in uh, over the rest of this week, and I do apologize for the videos that messed up at the beginning of the week if you got caught up in that, uh, but uh, I pray that you'll see through the end of the week, you see that it was all because of their sin. So today we're looking at uh, 2 Kings chapter 21 and uh, looking just for a moment at the at some of the goings on of what was going on in King Manasseh's life. Uh, he was basically one of the wickedest and worst kings um, that's even mentioned in the Bible, uh, but especially uh, for Judah. He's essentially, uh, and you'll see in our passage, he's compared uh, to wicked Ahab. Um, so you had Ahab in, in um, one kingdom, and then you have Manasseh in the other. And so it's just years and years. He, he's the son of uh, Hezekiah, and as Hezekiah we talked about, and, and that he was doing what was right in the sight of the Lord, although he was not perfect in who he is. But Manasseh just goes completely the other way, and he is just really just, just going out of his way. I can't even get my words together. It's like he goes out of his way um, to kind of spit in the face of God. And so with all of this, I want to want it to be a word of caution to us to not do the same thing that when we've been passed on good information and we've been passed on the word of God and and we've been passed on uh, biblical sound biblical doctrine and teaching from our parents and grandparents and and uh, Sunday school teachers and pastors and all these things that have been handed down to us through the word of God we can't just decide one day that Oh, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, I'd rather do it my way. As we look around in the world today, that's what's wrong with the world today is everybody wants to do it their way. And that's something that infuriates God. Today, I want you to see how he describes the way he's going to pour out his judgment uh, here. Second Kings chapter 21, looking at verses 13 through 15. And it says, And I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab. I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. So I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become victims of plunder to all their enemies. Because they have done evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. Now, several hundred years have taken place since they came out of Egypt, and yet he's saying, look, from day one, they have provoked me and tried to get me to turn against them. And today, he's basically saying today's going to be that day. We know that he's going to allow them to go into captivity. And as he's saying that he's going to forsake them, he's still... Is, this is still part of the, the covenant blessings that uh, were conditional. Um, it, it's it's not the same way that we would think, okay, well, they just ceased being his people. No, not at all. But he was allowing them to be pushed out, be taken out from the land. He was going to take even Jerusalem, as he said, like a dish that you would take when you're, when you're cleaning it, that you would wipe it out and turn it upside down. He said, that's what I'm going to do to Jerusalem. And could you imagine being the people of God and, and maybe even hearing this message and wicked King Manasseh uh, hearing these words said about you that, look, you are so wicked that this is what I'm going to do to the people that I took out of Egypt, that I freed so long ago. But I can't help but think how often, right? Look back at what God has saved you from. 
look at, I mean, we can look ahead to know that the, the future glory that we will experience in heaven, but because we're born again, if you have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, what he has saved you from, but yet we still choose to go our own way, do our own things and infuriate God. I don't know about you, but I don't want him to take my, my life may feel like it's tossed and, and, and tossed one end up on top of the other. and just seems like things are falling apart at times. Uh, but I know that that is God allowing things to happen. But let's pray that none of us ever go through a time where it's as if God is taking us like that bowl and wiping us out forevermore. Let's place our faith and trust in him knowing that we have eternal security in him. But let that also not be a, a freedom to spit in the face of God, a freedom to sin and act in any which way that we want to. So today, let's not infuriate God. But instead, let's take a look and repent of our sins and come back to that close walk with him today. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.